Okay, going to start with the motor effect. What is the motor effect? Well, you have, if you've got a magnetic field, a permanent magnet, and a wire, which is connected to a battery or some sort of power source, so you have a current through it, then you can get a force. So the idea is that a force will be produced when you have a current traveling through a magnetic field, but you must have the magnetic field and the current at angles to each other. If they are parallel, you will get no current. That's called a motor effect. In reality, an electric motor is a lot more complicated than that. It's basically a coil of wire, lots of coils of wire. More coils means more force. And it's designed such a way, you don't need to know the exact design, that one side will experience a force upwards and the other side will experience a force downwards. So you get a turning effect. And to get more powerful motors, you have more coils, a larger current, a larger magnetic field and a bigger area. The opposite to that, if you like, is electromagnetic induction, often called a generator effect. This time, instead of having a force, you move the wire, move a wire or conductor into a magnetic field. When you move it, Michael Faraday discovered this, that you generate an electric current. But when the wire is stationary, is stopped relative to the magnet, then you'll get no electric current. So moving the in or out of the magnetic field you get an induced current. The direction of the current can be reversed if you change the direction of the wire is moving and also if you change the direction of the magnetic field. To get a bigger current to generate more electricity, you increase the speed, you increase the magnetic strength and you increase the number of turns, have more, more than one turn of the coil and also the area of the coil. And this is how you make big generators to produce a lot of electricity. Here's the thing on the spec that you need to know. You need to know that to generate electricity, you must cut through electrical, uh, sorry, magnetic field lines. And if you cut through magnetic field lines, you will get a potential difference. The same thing will happen if you move the magnet in and out of the coil, so the coil stays stationary, but the magnet moves, and it's still cutting through the field. And if the wire is part of a complete circuit, then you'll get a current and generate your own electricity. This is how all power stations generate electricity, um, with the exception of solar power. They all make, turn a turbine to turn a big generator, which is a coil of wire and a magnet moving relative to each other. Um, this just shows you you can move the magnet in, in and outside of a coil. So if you, if, if you want to move the magnet in a coil and out of a coil, you get different directions of current as shown in the diagram. So when it's moving in, it goes one way, when it's moving out, it goes the other way. There you go, it goes negative that way, positive as it move out. To increase the size of the current, you can increase the speed, increase the magnetic strength, or increase the number of coils, again, like in the slide. Actual generators are coils of wire which turn in a magnetic field, or magnets which turn in a coil of wire. And the faster you can turn that, the bigger the voltage. And you'll notice one thing about the voltage against the time, which is it is alternating. You produce an alternating current, an alternating voltage, which is what our mains electricity.